As you know, Sunday is the Lord's Day. Christians rise with the sun on the eighth day, the first new day of a new age of the resurrection. And we all go to buildings which have been set apart for divine worship by the name church. And they're called church because it is the mystical body of Christ, the church, that's all of us, which assembles there in the presence of God, Just as the twelve tribes of Israel assembled at the foot of Mount Sinai to receive the law and came to the temple in Jerusalem to offer sacrifices to ask God to forgive their sins. Christians come to celebrate the sacrament of the Eucharist, a word which means thanksgiving. And we do so in the context of a liturgy filled with rites and ceremonies called the Mass. Now, every baptized Christian becomes a member of the church with water and the Holy Spirit. When water is poured over your head at baptism and the Holy Spirit descends down upon you. And so the Christian enters the church building just as he entered the church through baptism. What's the first thing that you do when you walk in the door of the church? What do you do? Okay, you bless yourself with holy water and you make the sign of the cross, right? It's a reminder of our baptism. And we trace upon ourselves the sign of the cross which brought about our insertion into the life of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that name that we invoke. The Christian finds a a space in an assembly where there are no divisions between rich and poor, race or social class. When he crosses the threshold of the church from the outside world into this sacred and holy place, he leaves behind all earthly cares to enter into a foretaste of the heavenly Jerusalem, the place where heaven meets earth at this mystical banquet. Jesus Christ reigns in the church as surely as he reigns in heaven, from his throne in the tabernacle, where he waits for us to come and worship and adore him. We enter the church... And the first thing that we do after we take holy water and we mark ourselves with the sign of the cross is that we gaze at Jesus Christ who waits for us in the tabernacle. And we touch our right knee to the ground in a simple act of adoration to Him who is worshipped by the angels and saints and by men. We hear those words from sacred scripture. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And think about if that's supposed to be our attitude of reverence at the name of Jesus. What about when we come into his church? Where he reigns in his kingdom of love from the tabernacle. We prepare for mass by kneeling. A symbol of our own submission to the will of God. We make prayers of adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. We silently prepare ourselves for the reenactment of the drama of Calvary to receive from the fruits of the one sacrifice offered to the Father for the salvation of men. The priest, a man ordained to offer sacrifice for the living and the dead, has no other reason to exist than to make present in the here and now the same sacrifice that the Lord accomplished on the cross and to give us the fruits of that same sacrifice. Every day He offers the Mass so that at every moment somewhere in the world there is one sacrifice of redemption celebrated in ritual forms and under symbols and signs, from the rising of the sun to its setting, and throughout the watches of the night.
Think about the fact that at every moment of every day, the Mass is being celebrated somewhere. And though there are millions and millions of celebrations of the Mass that go on during the day, it is the one sacrifice of Calvary that is present in each one of them. The priest enters the sacristy clad in his black cassock. Okay, you've seen me wear this before. And sometimes people will say, well, I don't know, why do you wear that? What is that all about? And the cassock is a sign of his renunciation of the world and also of penance for his sins. And before the priest is about to go to Mass, after praying and really preparing himself, recollecting himself spiritually to enter into the mystery of the Mass, the first thing he does is go to the sink and he washes his hands. And he prays these words, Cleanse my hands, O Lord, from all stain, that pure in mind and body I may be worthy to serve thee. Just as the priest of the Old Testament purified the hands that would offer the sacrifices of animals and plants, the priest of the new and eternal covenant washes his hands as a symbol of a prayer that he may be worthy to offer the last sacrifice for the people of God. The priest then puts on vestments reminiscent of those worn by the priests of the temple and the doctors of the law. Now, I guess in theory, you know, I could just say mass and, you know, jeans and a t-shirt with nothing else on. It'd certainly be more comfortable for me. But everything that we do in the church has this beautiful symbolism which points beyond the ordinary and the daily and points to heaven. Everything that we do has all kinds of beautiful meaning to it. The psalmist says, Adore the Lord in holy attire. And the priest, putting on these special clothes, reminds himself that what he is doing is no ordinary everyday action, but the act by which Jesus redeems and saves us. He makes the sign of the cross and picks up the amice, which is a linen cloth held by strings, evoking the prayer shawls of Jewish men. Okay? If you've ever seen Jewish men pray, you know they put this prayer shawl on as a symbol of the presence of God covering them and enveloping them in love and prayer. And so we have a similar thing. And he will touch it to his head and then put it on his shoulders and the priest prays, Place, O Lord, the helmet of salvation upon my head to repel the assaults of the devil. Satan hates the Mass because by that sacrifice commemorated here, his reign over the hearts of men was destroyed. And so he seeks to distract the priest from his noble task and draw him into hell with the damned. So the priest reminds reminds himself and all of us that through the grace of Christ, we must be able to repel all of those evil thoughts and distractions which keep us from grace. Undaunted, the priest picks up the alb, a white garment stretching to the feet, which reminds him of the pure white robe given to him at baptism as a symbol of his restored innocence. The word alb comes from the Latin word alba, which means white. That's all it means. When St. John had his vision of the end of the world, he saw a multitude which no man could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. 
the priest standing in the place of the people, and one with them, appears before them as a sign of the blessed in heaven, praising the Lamb slain for them in sacrifice. And when he puts on the alb, he prays, Cleanse me, O Lord, and purify my heart, that being made white in the blood of the Lamb, I may attain everlasting joy. Now you notice with the alb, it is all white. And the old Roman tradition was that the higher the uh, priest was in the hierarchy, so to speak, if he was a monsignor or a bishop or a cardinal or the pope or whatever, and the higher the feast day, that the more decoration you would have on the alb. Um, so that's why you know sometimes you see pictures of the Pope celebrating Mass, uh, and he will have lots of lace because lace was one of those things that you know people were able to make in order to give to divine service. Uh, and so here at Prince of Peace, uh, very often, just on a normal weekday, then we won't have any lace at all. But on a normal Sunday, we might have a little bit, and then on big feast days, we have a lot. Uh, so that gives kind of a uh, kind of a visual sign as to the dignity of the feast that's being celebrated. So we wouldn't wear tons of lace on, a, on just a normal weekday during Lent, uh, but then on Easter Sunday we would. The next thing that the priest does, because he's got to keep all of this together somehow so he doesn't trip over himself and make a scene in front of everybody, he puts the cincture around his waist. He prays, gird me, O Lord, with the girdle of purity, and quench in me the fire of concupiscence, that the grace of temperance and chastity may abide in me. He reminds himself that he is a sinful man, prone to the lust of the flesh as any man, but called to a life of angelic chastity for the love of souls. As Jesus said to the Apostle Peter, he now says to the priest, When you were young, you girded yourself and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish to go. Christ reminds the priest that he's promised to an obedience which transcends his own desires, a sacrifice willingly undertaken for love of souls. Now in ancient times, the priest puts on his left arm a maniple, which was originally a handkerchief to wet his sweaty brow during Mass. It's something which was made optional in 1970. Uh, so you know what happens whenever you make anything optional. Usually people just stop wearing it. Um, in the extraordinary form of the Mass, um, we still wear it uh, in the ordinary form. Uh, even I don't usually wear it because it kind of, you know, gets in the way. Uh, but as we do that, the priest prays, Grant me, O Lord, to bear the light burden of grief and sorrow, that I may with gladness take the reward of my labor. The priest's life, like that of any Christian disciple, is one of hard work and solitude. So he asks for the strength to live the life Christ has asked him to live. Give me again, O Lord, the stole of immortality, which I lost by the transgression of my first parents. And although I am unworthy to come unto thy holy sacrament, grant that I may attain everlasting felicity. This man of obedience, this man of sorrows, kisses and places round his neck a stole, a long, narrow piece of cloth. Roman government officials wore stoles as signs of their authority. And the priest, who has the authority from God to teach, sanctify, and govern, wears this ancient emblem of office whenever he celebrates a sacrament. Now, You'll notice that when the bishop, who has the fullness of the priesthood, the highest level of holy order, celebrates Mass, he wears the stole going all the way down. 
uh, also because he has the pectoral cross right in between the two parts of the stole. Whereas in the ancient tradition, the priest actually crosses the stole um, and he does that in order to symbolize the fact that he does not have the fullness of the priesthood uh, and that he has to work always in uh, tandem with his bishop who has that fullness of apostolic authority. But more important than authority, however legitimate, is love. And so the priest covers the stole and everything else with the chasuble from the Latin word casula, or little house, signifying that charity is to cover everything else in the priest's life. He prays, Lord, who has said, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Grant that I may so bear it as to attain thy grace. Amen. The priest is ready with all of the sacred vestments to celebrate the Mass. I'm sure you may have never known you know, that it took so much uh, clothing for the priest. This is why I'm hot all the time, just in case you're wondering. Um, and then after all of this, the priest may put on his head covering, the beretta. Uh, with the children, I always call it my holy hat. Um, it has its origins in the Middle Ages as a scholar's cover. Uh, the priest must be learned in the sacred sciences, so it is appropriate that he wear the sign of that learning in church. Uh, those of you who have ever been to graduation, remember you have the mortar board that everybody wears, uh, which is something which came originally from the Beretta. And it was made optional uh, in 1962, uh, and so uh, a lot of priests don't wear it anymore. Uh, and you'll notice that when we wear the Beretta, very often the priest will take it off. And that's not a nervous tick, or he's not there trying to, you know, make sure his, he's having a good hair day underneath all that. Uh, but the point is that, remember when we heard, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, that everyone, not just the priest, is supposed to bow their heads when they hear the name of Jesus. And so as a sign to everyone in the congregation, when the priest is seated and he has his holy hat on, then he will take off the beretta and bow his head in reverence at the name of Jesus. So the priest has all of his holy clothes on, and then he spends time in silent preparation for what he's about to do. When the time comes, he bows to the cross in the sacristy, as just as the Word made flesh came forth from the body of the Virgin into the world, the Word's herald comes vested in the ancient garments of tradition from the womb of the sacristy into the church, the body of Christ given for the life of the world. He rings a bell as a sign that the drama of Calvary is about to begin and everyone is ready to witness its power and glory. I think it's time for us to celebrate Mass. <laughs> 